Yo, what's up Terrarians? Welcome back to my Slime Staff Only Master Mode Challenge. Last time we defeated the Wall of Flesh and entered Hard Mode, and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't already, since even the pre-Hard Mode grind was very interesting and fun in my opinion. Anyway, continuing on to Hard Mode, I would have loved to show the montage of me dying to the Goblin Invasion over and over again, as it spawned just after I defeated the Wall of Flesh but I accidentally deleted the recordings clearing space for new recordings. But eventually I realized I just needed to avoid the Goblin Warlock and kill the Grunts to clear it, so wasn't that interesting. But while I lack the footage to show just how much harder this challenge is, the point is that it's a lot harder and I've got a lot of preparations to do before I can even start making progress as I do almost no damage to even the most basic hard mode enemies. The first step in my preparations, however, is to work towards preventing the biome spread, and for that I'll need a lot of dynamite and a lot of money, so I start grinding out the pirate invasion. Just a reminder for everyone, if anything looks strange about this gameplay, it's because I'm playing on the Celebration Mark 10 Secret Seed. This is a completely unmodded Terraria world. Anyway, cheesing the pirate invasion wasn't particularly interesting, but I also wanted the black spot mount from the Flying Dutchman, so I made a setup to catch one of the ships so my slimes could hit the cannons and slowly took it out. After returning to spawn, I also stumbled across a lucky coin drop that I almost missed, so that was neat, and after grinding for a while, I eventually got all of the coin ring components. Before I get back to my efforts to stop the biome spread, I decided to build an artificial underground corruption slash enemy farm. I've never actually done this in a playthrough, so I make the mistake of not building it low enough to let me farm for souls of night, but it was still useful and allowed me to fight the Eater of Worlds, which was a total cakewalk, allowing me to check off another boss relic to collect. But I didn't just make this biome to kill the Eater of Worlds. After a while, my next target finally spawns, a Corrupt Mimic. And after leading it to a safe location to fight it, which takes way too long to kill, it doesn't drop what I want, so eventually I just create a teleporter setup to cheese it and get the putrid scent. Somewhere along the way, I also got a hold of a few mechanical skulls, so I decided it's time to cheese Skeletron Prime. Except I realized the teleporter setup is far better than the Hoik cheese I did in the last video. After a quick test, I realized that I need to start the fight just before morning so Prime doesn't come out of his spinning mode and mess up the trick, and after a long time, eventually I have defeated the first and easiest mechanical boss. And now I can spend the defender medals I got from all the attempts to beat the old one's army in pre-hard mode on the monk's shirt and squire greaves. The start of my mixed armor set to maximize my summon damage. In order to beat this challenge I prepared a spreadsheet to help me calculate the optimal setup in order to make sure that it would be possible to kill the mechanical bosses before the night was up, since otherwise this challenge would be impossible. 
It's not much to look at, and it's repurposed for my Wand of Sparking only challenge, but it helped me to plan for bosses, so after getting these items, I prepared for the first challenging boss of hard mode, Queen Slime. She doesn't drop anything particularly useful to me besides the mount, but I was aiming to kill all the bosses, so I did it for the relic. I had thought that I could simply use a line of blocks to block Queen Slime's projectiles and use the NPC limit cheese to stop the minion spawns, but that didn't work quite as planned since Queen Slime aims to hover between a ceiling and the player, similar to Queen Bee. After several tests, I ultimately realized that a manual version of the setup to kill the corrupt mimics was the play for the second phase. By fighting Queen Slime at the ocean with Terra Spark boots, the first phase was a cakewalk, as I could keep summoning my baby slime on the Queen Slime and just dodge the teleports. Manually sync my teleports up to get Queen Slime stuck in the box and repeat until she's dead. I gave a quick attempt to the twins, or rather just Retinazer, by despawning Spasmatism with the NPC limit cheese, just to confirm what I already knew, that I didn't have enough damage output to win within the night, before gathering up more supplies like Wrath Potions from Corruption Fishing and practicing the fight more to try getting closer to my theoretical damage output calculations. Another item I'll need to fully optimize my damage output is a Moonstone from Vampires from random solar eclipses. But after going dry on the 5.63% drop rate, I started worrying that the wiki information was inaccurate and it wouldn't drop until after Plantera or Golem was defeated. I even added Feral Biden to my buffs and started getting close. Eventually I got the stormy weather and was able to get a sand elemental to spawn and mostly AFK kill it in a box for the ingredient for my forbidden mask, increasing my damage by one more point and finally giving me the DPS to defeat the lone twin. The strategy for Retinazer was that I'd take advantage of the precise spacing in order to summon my baby slime directly on top of Retinazer and manually teleport in order to dodge the dashes and keep Retinazer on top of my minion when possible. The percentages worked out in the first phase to give me more damage using Feral Bite than the Stinger Necklace, which I avoided using in order to not damage Retinazer with anything other than my slime minion. Swapping back to the Stinger Necklace in the second phase, since Retinazer's increased defense means I get more damage this way, and with all my buffs, I was finally able to kill the second mech boss 30 seconds before daytime.
From here, the 82 segments of the Destroyer and Piercing of the Slime means that the challenge is definitely possible to complete, but consistently damaging several segments of the Destroyer is a very difficult task, so before tackling that difficult task, I prepare for another one, defeating Duke Fishron. Duke Fishron was actually the hardest boss for me to deal with in this whole challenge. I had to do several attempts lasting hours each, building a multi-stage timer device, activating teleporters for each phase, matching his attack pattern. Manually swapping to the next phase timer with a very short window that I had to expand by making a multi-step teleporter cycle for the second phase, so teleporting early wouldn't kill me and fail the attempt. Debugging issues where my timers desynced by one frame each cycle. Managing to wire it all up to the teleporters without the wires getting in the way, and even just figuring out the precise timing of Duke Fishron's attack cycle by doing a frame by frame analysis of video of Duke Fishron attempts and having to double check when my numbers were wrong because of lag frames messing with my analysis. In the end, I created an infinite slime mount fall setup for phase 3 simply because I didn't want to bother debugging, terraria wiring, and repeating 4 hour attempts anymore. Although this required manually summoning my slime to intercept Duke Fishron for an hour and a half instead of the AFK experience of the first two phases, but unlike that wiring mess, this setup worked first try and finally I've managed to kill Duke Fishron before killing the third mech boss in master mode with only the weakest summon in the game and wiring teleporter technology. With my new mount that flies fast in the rain, I can finally map out the sky so my world map looks nice and get to my preparations for the destroyer. My first idea was to use the NPC limit cheese to prevent probe spawns by having 82 less enemies than 200, which required capturing a wild bat instead of statue spawning it. But while that worked, a regular safety box did not allow me to do consistent enough damage to get anywhere close, even with every single possible damage buff. However, I actually attempted this challenge many years ago, before the black spot was nerfed. And though I failed back then, I had another trick up my sleeve for the destroyer that required the only other mount whose speed could match the destroyer at this point in the game, the Shrimpy Truffle. In order to give a medium for the destroyer to dig through while also letting me hit it and use the top speed of the mount, I bridged across the entire large world and created a container for water and began draining the oceans to fill this area with a thin layer of water. But I needed more water, so I got even more from Sky Island Lakes and even an underwater cave.
After dying in an attempt to random spawns in the water, I fought Torch God thinking I could auto-place Corch Torals at an ocean to get underwater torches, but that didn't work, so I farmed Ikor for torches instead. and after some practice, I finally attempted Destroyer, and it was a cakewalk. Seizure warning for the lightning flashes for this fight, but all I had to do was turn around at the end, dodge the swarm of 80 probes, and then go back to dealing damage. I actually forgot to record the first time I killed the Destroyer, hit my hotkey and killed him again, but the hotkey didn't actually go through the second time, and so I actually had to kill him a third time to get the recording for the video. And with every single pre-3 mech boss buff, it took no time at all. Now that the mech bosses are out of the way, there are no more time limits getting in the way of whether this challenge is possible or not. All that's left is to finish off the remaining bosses. Plantera is up first, and while I thought she was going to be one of the hardest bosses in the game, dodging her all around and prepared for a very difficult boss fight and a huge endurance battle in order to keep my baby slime consistently damaging her. With the NPC limit cheese, Plantera cannot even move. This caught me off guard, but I decided to just roll with it. And in order to prevent anything spawning to give me trouble, I brought the corrupt bunnies with me as I set up a method to kill Plantera AFK after she spawned inside of the jungle temple. And after some testing, I decided on a Hoik teleport loop until I got to phase 2 and Plantera stopped shooting projectiles. Eventually I decided to place and break ultra bright torches so that y'all can see the boss and once Plantera died, I broke into the jungle temple to collect my reward. Next up was Golem, and rather than set up the NPC limit cheese outside the arena and figure out some way to activate it, then hoik my way in because I did not want to deal with a huge endurance battle inside of a closed arena, I just led the bunnies all the way through to the arena. This was pretty dumb, I probably should have just set it up outside the arena, but Golem was also trivial to defeat, although I almost killed myself trying to see how close I could get or how low of a ceiling I could trap him under. Despawning the fists and head meant there was nothing to kill me besides my own stupidity, and all I had to do was wait for the fight to be over.
So now, after all that work to get so far, using almost every cheese and exploit I could think of in order to barely clear the last obstacles to make this challenge possible, I was finally in the home stretch and it was smooth sailing. I realized though that I probably wouldn't be able to beat the Empress of Light without the projectile limit cheese strat, but after throwing a bit under a thousand beach balls, I promptly realized I can't even kill the prismatic lacewing to spawn her, so my goal of killing every boss is a fail, and I'll have to settle for just beating the game. So I went on to the lunatic cultist, and actually managed to kill the cultist to spawn him by stacking another enemy on top of them to hit them both at once. With the projectile limit cheese and NPC limit cheese together, it was just a matter of setting up the placement for a box to sick my slime in and AFKing until it was over. I somewhat regret using the projectile limit cheese because it made the fight a lot less interesting. Although I already had it set up and now that I defeated the lunatic cultist, the end game was already in sight so I just decided to continue on to the end. The NPC limit cheese now also allowed me to skip the pillars, so it was on to the final boss. I removed three dummies so Moon Lord could spawn, and kinda just waited for the fight to end, adjusting the terrain so my slimes could get to the hand eyes, and positioning the forehead eye in the box. The cheese strategies that made this otherwise seemingly impossible challenge possible, in the end made things trivial. It was a fun experience, but if I do another challenge in the future, I'll probably do one without any major exploits or cheese strategies, so it stays interesting to the end. I didn't even have to get any new equipment after the mech bosses. Once the heart opened up, it was just a sack of 100,000 hit points dealing 5 damage per second, so I went to sleep so the 5.5 hour final phase of the boss fight could finish, and I woke up the following morning to grab my reward, and place the final relic to conclude the challenge. Sorry about the lower quality of this video, I got pretty burnt out with the project and was very busy with work, so I just wanted to get this video finished and uploaded so I could continue moving on to new projects. I hope you still enjoyed the video though. Anyway, if you stuck around to the end, please subscribe for more content like this and consider donating to my Patreon so I can quit my job and make content full time. Thanks for watching and God bless.